Hello, I'm Lawrence Anthony, and in this video, I'm going to explain how to use the Anconc Concordance tool. In this video, I'll just cover the basic features, and in another video, we'll look at some of the advanced features of this tool. So, first, I'm going to load in a corpus, and another video shows how to download Anconc and get started with the software. So, I'll go straight ahead and go to File, Open Files, and I'm going to navigate to the brown corpus, which is a one million word corpus of general English. And for this demonstration, I'm going to use the subcategory of the brown corpus, which is related to journalism or press English. So that's categories A, B, and C. So I load those into the Anconc software. I go to file view just to make sure that the files are loaded correctly, which they are. So now I can start using my concordance tool. The concordance tool allows you to search for a word or a phrase that you're interested in in your corpus. And then it will show you the kind of patterns that it appears in. So for example, if I'm interested in the word report, I would type the word report in the search box here at the bottom of the screen. And then I can hit start or I can hit return. And the software will go through the corpus and find all the hits for report and show them in the middle here of the screen. And it will also show you the words that appear on the left or on the right of the search term. Now, if you want to have a little bit more of the context, you would go to the search window size box here and then you would increase this to, for example, 100. And that means roughly 100 characters to the left and 100 characters to the right of the search term. So if I now search again, you'll see that we have more context. Now, you'll see that we have 42 hits. And these hits are appearing in the order that they occur in the corpus at the moment. But in this ordering, it's quite difficult to see any kind of patterns. So if you want to see patterns, it's good to sort the results, for example, by the words to the left or the right of the search term. So we can do that at the bottom of the screen here using the quick sort. There's three levels of sort, and the default is one word to the right, and then two words to the right, and then three words to the right. So if I click the sort button, you'll see what it does. So the search term is still highlighted in blue, but now the software has sorted all the words to the right. So we can see now that we have at the top, although, and then and, and back, and called. And we go down and we can see those words ordered correctly. It then orders the results to the second word to the right, and then the third word to the right. And we can start seeing a few more of the patterns now. For example, we have report of occurring a few times, report on occurring a few times, and so on. At the bottom here, we have report to. We can also sort in different ways. For example, I can sort to the left, one word to the left, two words to the left, three words to the left. And if we do this, we see a different kind of pattern. We see what comes before report, like labor report, the Jackson report, a short report. And then we see the definite article, the report occurring a few times at the bottom, and to report. When you're looking through the results, you may actually want to see where the result appeared in the original file. To do that, you would just float your cursor over the search hit and you can see a little finger appears. And if you click then on that word, the software will jump to the file view tool and show you exactly where that word appears in the original file. So it allows you to see even more context. So using a combination of searching and sorting, we can start to see lots of patterns. For example, I can type reporting. I can get the patterns for reporting. 
there are not so many here, but if I sort them, you can see what happens to the left. Well, we can go back to the ordering on the right, and we can see reporting. Or we can type reported and see what would happen. And we can see immediately there are lots of hits reported. In fact, 46 here. You can also search for phrases. For example, we can search now for report on, which we noticed a few moments ago. And so those results and see what happens after report on. And we can also type in a phrase like to report and see that it how it's being used in the corpus. If you want to search for report, reporting, reported, and so on, perhaps a better way to do the search is to use a wildcard. So a wildcard for example, a star here or asterisk means zero or more characters following the previous letter. So this means report and then ed or ing or any other letters. So if I start this, you'll see the results now. There's a lot more results, 135 in fact. And you can see we have reports, reportedly, reported, and so on. We can also sort these results. Here, it's a good idea to sort on the zero word, which means the center word. And then, for example, one R and two R. If we sort these, you can see now all these examples of report first. And then we can see reported, reportedly, reporters, reporting, reports, and so on. Ankonk has quite a few wildcards that you can use and they're all listed in the global settings, which I won't show here, but perhaps in the advanced feature tutorial later. Above the search box here, you see that we have a few options. For example, here we're actually using searching for words, but we don't have to. We could just search for a string of characters starting with report. For example, even rep. And if we do this, we will then search for all the strings where rep appears in the corpus. Usually it seems that rep is at the beginning of a word, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. For example, I could also search for a string like port or por, and then it will find all the strings of por. And you can see that some of these are in the middle of words. We could also sort those in the same way as before. Notice we're sorting on the word with the P-O-R string in it. And so P-O-R, sporadic, temporarily, contemporary, and so on. So then you can see the pattern that occurs with that search. Okay, coming back to the search options. If I type in a, the word report, um, I'll use words. With, with a lowercase r and also with an uppercase r. In fact, the whole word is uppercase here. If you actually are interested in looking, for example, at only lowercase versions of report, we would click on the case option here, and that would force it to use case when doing a, the search. So now there are no uppercase examples in our list. Alternatively, if we want to look for a capital R at the beginning of the word, we would add an R now. And you can see that there's only one example of report starting with a capital letter. If we use all capitals now, we can find all the hits which are just three. So case allows you to search for uppercase and lowercase separately. The default is that it's turned off. So when we search now, we get all the hits as before. Ankonk also allows you to do regular expression searches, if you know what those are. If we turn on the regex or regular expression option, you'll notice the case and words options are grayed out because they are no longer meaningful. 
and then we can build up a regular expression to find what we are interested in. So this is a little complicated, but for example, we would start with a word boundary. Then we may have the letter R followed by any letter from A to Z and plus would be one or more of them. Then we have a non-greedy search with a question mark, finishing with a letter T and then another word boundary. So this would allow you to search for any word starting with R, finishing with T, and you can see here RT, RT, and it allows you to do some quite advanced searches. You can of course then sort the results, as we've been doing before, to find out what words fit those conditions. Now coming back to our original search report, if you um, want to compare your results, one way is to use the clone results button. If we click this, we will see a little window with those results that we've just generated. And you can look at those, and while looking at those, you can come back and do another search, for example, reported. And you can then clone those results and then we can get both results showing. And we can see the differences. So cloning the results is sometimes useful when you want to compare two sets of results. Now, the concordance tool has many features and um, some of them are hidden initially, but we, we can reveal them by, for example, clicking on the advanced button here or going to the tool preferences and looking at some of the features listed there. But I'll leave that for another video. Okay, so that's the basic features of the concordance tool. Thank you.